<coughs> the first example is another delta epsilon example. So um, delta epsilon. So this is the first item on the agenda, and we have the following example. Okay, we need to prove that the limit is x approaches zero plus. So we're looking at the one-sided limit of the square root of x equals zero. Again, this is one of those things that uh, intuitively we know it to be correct, but uh, if you remember, we have a delta epsilon definition of the limit, in, <coughs> of one-sided limit. In case you don't remember it, let me just put it on, on the paper and show you. Uh, we are looking, this is zero, x approaches zero plus. So in this case, we are talking about right-hand limit and the formal definition, the precise definition, or the delta epsilon definition is this paragraph right here. We want to show that... Um, for every epsilon greater than zero, there is a delta positive such that if uh, x is greater than a, but less than a plus delta, then uh, f, the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Remember, l is the limit value, a is the x value. x approaches a plus in this case, and of course below that we have a minus. So we're going to implement this definition. We apply this definition. So the solution goes like this. Before we get to the proof, we need to find delta. So we're going to, let's say, suppose epsilon is positive, And now we first, uh, we need to find a suitable delta. Uh, such that if again this is I'm, I'm rewriting what um, well I take what the statement in this in the definition if you recall we said if x minus a plus a however is zero is less than delta, then f of x, in this case, the square root of x, minus l, in this case, l is 0, is less than epsilon, like so. So, in this case, hence, uh, we have the following, f of x equals square root of x, l is 0, and a is zero plus. Right. Those are the uh, the component. And now, in order to find delta, we're going to start with this statement right there. Okay, and square root of x minus zero is less than epsilon. We're going to work on it until we come up with a suitable delta. So, the starting point will be the absolute value of the square root of x minus zero is less than epsilon. And this leads us to the absolute value of the square root of x by itself is less than epsilon. Okay, and of course we can square both sides. Since the quantity here is positive, then the direction of the inequality will remain the same. So as you square both sides, you you guarantee that whatever you have here is positive. So you can say that x by itself is less than epsilon squared, okay, by squaring both sides. So we got that part. And actually, we might as well keep the absolute value because now we want it. We want to show this one, right? We want to find delta. So 
we want to go from the right side to the left side, said that we'll have something on the other side of the, the inequality that we can call delta. So all I need to do in order to come to move from here to here is to subtract zero plus. So I can say that the absolute value of x minus zero plus, which is the same thing, will be therefore less than epsilon squared. And now I constructed what I want. I want this to equal right here. Well, this quantity is positive, so therefore I can call the right side of an equality delta, and that will be my choice of delta. So the result is that we'll choose delta to be epsilon squared. Okay? And now we can prove that for this delta, um, the difference between f of x and l, or the difference between the square root of x and 0, will be less than epsilon. Okay, so here is the formal proof part. The formal proof is the following. Okay, we're going to say that um, suppose delta equal epsilon square, then if the absolute value of x minus 0 plus is less than delta, which equals epsilon squared, then we need to show that uh, the square root of x, if we take the square root of both sides, then we have the square root of the absolute value is less than the square root of epsilon squared, or it's less than epsilon. And this is this complete the proof. So we show that this part right there, actually, we can write it or the square root of x minus 0 in absolute value is less than epsilon. Okay? And therefore, by the uh, delta epsilon definition, or precise definition, since we show that the square root of x minus 0 is less than epsilon, we can say that the limit as x approaches 0 plus of the square root of x indeed equals 0. It is complete, the formal proof. So again, it's a matter of formality, but the structure of this uh, task is the same. You start with what the difference between f of x and the limit, and you say this has to be less than epsilon. Epsilon, we are free to choose whatever uh, value for epsilon. Epsilon value that we wish. It can be as small as we want. Then for, for any given small value of epsilon, we can find a, a corresponding or a suitable delta. For that particular delta that we chose, we can show that the difference is less than epsilon, so kind of going one way and then coming back. The coming back is the proof, really. Okay? Once we chose, we have a choice for delta, then we prove for that delta, then the difference between f of x and the limit is, has to be less than epsilon, therefore the limit, uh, the definition of the limit uh, is, has been proven.